PP people love doing things to their cars. If they didn't, I wouldn't have a freaking job. Sometimes people do really bizarre things to their cars, and today, we're gonna look at some of those trends. We've got fake rust, we've got ironic license plates, and make up for your car. Why do people do it, and where did it come from? Hold on, cuh, because I'm gonna tell you. This is a big thank you to Rec Watches for sponsoring today's episode of The D-List. Everyone knows that we love driving fast and loud cars, but my love for vehicular driving splendor extends far beyond the asphalt. I'm talking about getting vehicles muddy, down in dirty, dusty old donuts. And what better to do that in than a Land Rover Defender? But you can't race or off-road if you don't show up on time. That's what they always say, you gotta off-road on time. But now, thanks to Rec Watches, I can be on time and look good doing it. That's right, Rec Watches are back, and this time it's with their R&R collection. The R&R collection consists of two distinct models with a dial handcrafted directly from a 19. Land Rover and a 2003 Defender and a design that is inspired by its organ donor car. James, I don't like watches that represent a British off-road legacy. I like speed. Well, buckle up, cowboy, because I know you're gonna like the watch that RWB and REC got together and collaborated on. It's made with actual pieces of Akira Nakai's RWB Porsche, his personal car. You don't like Land Rovers or RWB Porsches? Fine, I know about an all-American classic. I know you guys will like that. If you don't like one of those three, then you don't like anything. No matter what style tickles your fancy, one thing is for sure, and that is that all of these REC watch models are highly limited. So head on over to RECWatches.com or click the link in the description and enter code 15 dash off dash donut to get 15% off your entire purchase. And guys, this is a premium item, so 15% is quite a bit. Now let's go talk about some more weird car stuff. If you're a city slicker like me, you might not know about this funky trend, but if you're from the South, like also me, you've probably witnessed these oddly stanced pickup trucks. I'm talking about the Carolina Squall. <laughs> Despite it being named after the Carolinas, this truck trend actually originated from trophy trucks down in Baja. Turns out the real reason that the rear is lowered and not the front is that it helps when you're flying over them sandy dunes of Baja. This angle makes your truck more likely to land on its rear tires. And that's important when you're Baja blasting because nose diving while going 100 miles per hour is not good. But like a lot of these truck trends, most of the Carolina squat trucks don't ever venture off the road at all and just end up looking like they have broken suspension driving down the road on the way to Baja fresh. And because of that, a lot of people like to hate on these Carolina squatters. But as we'll soon learn from the rest of this list, lots of car trends start as something for motorsports that quickly devolves into something more aesthetic. But who am I to judge? Can I get a squatter's rights? Fake patina. A nice patina can add a lot of character to a car. Ask Nolan. He's a registered patina file. But the thing is, you can't just snap your fingers and have a beautiful natural paint rust mix. That's up to mother nature. But if you want a distressed look and don't have time to let your car oxidize in a shed, there is another option. You can always paint your car to look like it has patina. In the age of endless resto mods and dwindling classic car resources, now you can make any car look like a bird's been pooping on it for the past 40 years. A nice oxidized finish looks great on your uncle's old Dodge truck, so why not a 2015 Hellcat? And if you don't have the cash to hire an artisan patina painter, you can get vinyl wraps that come pre-rusted. I wonder what Nolan thinks about patina wraps. <clears throat> Look, I know we all, uh, here at Donut, we're all about respecting all cars and all that. Every, every car is cool, that's our stance. But uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta say, it's one thing to like have someone paint a fake patina. That does take some skill. But to have a printed wrap to make it look old, don't sit right with me. I don't like that. Patina is earned, guys. That's what makes it cool, is that it, you, you had to find a car that had been sitting out somewhere for, in my case, 70 years. Um, Sounds kind of elitist, dude. It is a little elitist, I will say. You're right, Max. Uh, gatekeeping, you know what? Nah, it's not gatekeeping, though. No. Because at the end of the day, it's just a rusty car. Back to you, James. 
Race cars got big fat letters on their tires. That's a fact, and you can't argue with science. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Tire companies pay a lot of money for that real estate. And now, thanks to fancy modern technologies that we have yet to understand, like paint, stencils, and stickers, your car can have big old letters on it too. Tire lettering. This is a trend that's been super popular in the last couple years, but really, People have been painting letters on their tires for decades, all right? And just like anything that becomes really popular, uh, people are inevitably gonna start hating on it. I mean, you should see my DMs. But there are some seriously cool examples of this trend, in my opinion. Like when Akira Nakai, one of the coolest dudes on this big fat earth, spray paints idlers on the tires of the RWB cars he builds, just because it looks cool. He made a freaking tire company. That's awesome, all right? And sometimes, Looking cool is what it's all about. Just ask Zac Efron. Truck nuts. Speaking of looking cool, nothing's cooler than putting realistic human genitalia on a truck. We did an entire episode of Wheelhouse on truck nuts a while back, and it made the trending page, which is insane to think about because it was partially demonetized uh, because he, no one was just talking about bumper plums for 15 minutes. This is another trend that makes an embarrassing amount of sense, all right? It plays right into that old adage that the bigger the truck, the smaller your, your wiener. And it's the next logical modification after a lift kit, knobby tires, light bar, monster energy drink decal. Then what do you do? I don't know, where do you go from there? I don't know, let's put balls on my truck. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, we all know the kind of person who puts balls on their truck. And here in the US, people love being identified as that kind of person. <laughs> These plastic pecker pouches come in all colors and sizes up to 18 inches. 18 inch balls. They even make Cybertruck nuts now. Freaking Cybertruck's not even out yet. <laughs> That's the kind of innovation you can expect after 30 years of testicles for trucks, all right? If you wanna know more about truck nuts, check out the episode uh, of Wheelhouse that Nolan did. It's really, really great. I'll put a link at the end of this video. If I owned a truck, and I do plan on owning a truck w within the next year, I would have big fiberglass butt on the tailgate and uh, it would be like the centaur of trucks. You know that peeing Calvin sticker? You know that we couldn't do a list of the most bizarre car trends without mentioning the freaking Calvin peeing on stuff sticker. Don't like something? Let the world know by putting an image of a child peeing on the logo for the thing that you don't like. Which child should we use? I don't know. Maybe the one from the f newspaper. Perfect. This one's been around since the 90s and Calvin's peed on a lot of stuff since then. Are you a Ford guy? Don't worry. There's a Calvin peeing on a Chevy sticker for you. You a Dodge guy? Don't worry. There's a Calvin peeing on a Chevy sticker for you. Got some examples here of some Calvin truck nuts. This one's good. I agree with this. It's Calvin peeing on COVID-19. I mean, I think we can all agree. Not huge COVID-19 fans. Oh, dang. This is like an alt Calvin. This one's not a great Calvin. Um, it's like a bootleg, bootleg Calvin. And he's peeing on his ex. Now, I don't know if that's saying like, I don't like my ex or me and my ex still see each other from time to time and we like water sports. Oh, Calvin peeing on ISIS. Yeah, that, take that ISIS. Oh, and here we go. Uh, Calvin peeing on Bill Watterson's legacy. Now, why would I say that? Bill Watterson has come out and said that he never wanted to do any sort of merchandising and the Calvin peeing on stuff kind of goes against the whole point of the comics, which was like understanding and childhood wonder. So one, these are all bootleg and basically plagiarism. And like a lot of things on this list, you can go too far with this trend, okay? I've just uh, been informed that Nolan has another counterpoint. <laughs> all right, so yeah, Bill Watterson, uh, great guy. Uh, you know who wasn't thinking that same way? <laughs> Jim Davis of Garfield fame. Jim Davis had a very cynical approach to Garfield. He wanted to make as much merchandise, merchandise as possible. He wanted to cash in as hard as he could, which is why there's there was the Garfield cartoon. There's been Garfield movies, all this kind of stuff. I don't know, man. We should uh, we should drink before these. <laughs> I love how Nolan's talking trash about merchandise as he wears his own shirt. <laughs> Tacky tram. Automotive designers spend years going to college to learn how to tweak little details in a car's design to make it cool, practical, and sleek. So 
Why on this fat earth would you go and buy a $12 fake plastic vent that does nothing and slap it on the side of your car? Look, I'm not here to hashtag mod shame anybody, all right? There's plenty of cool things you can do to make your stockish looking car your own, but there's got to be some rules or else we all live in chaos. Let's take a look at just what the heck is going on here. Oh my God. Skulls, check. Is that, there's a skull bash bar, skulls on the hood. The most offensive thing to me is the scale of the World War II fender paint. Because this thing is obviously, the guy wants it to look aggressive, but the mouth and the eyes on this Jeep animal are very small and not intimidating at all. So we got here is a Nissan Altima with I think those are canards. I actually love this one. No notes. That that Metro is awesome. That's like a really cool gambler car. Shouts to Tate and the rest of the gambler 500 crew. One of the best weekends of my life. The craziest part though, is that this is not just like a fringe group of people doing this. They wouldn't make this stuff if people didn't buy it. And even major car companies are now putting fake trim on their cars. Say what you want, nothing speaks louder than dollars. You know what I mean? Now Max threatened to sue me over this one, but I said, screw it, it's worth it. If I can finally give these uppity West Coast elites a piece of my mind. Tesla vanity plates. Please don't sue me, Max, I'm running out of money. Driving an electric vehicle is fine. Doing your part to save the earth is cool. Ludicrous mode is fun. Getting a snarky vanity license plate for your Tesla is not cool and it's not funny. I know this because I'm a retired professional comedian. Nothing makes people who already don't like electric cars dislike electric cars more than a license plate that says, why buy gas? Got what? LOL gas. We get it. Just be happy driving your Tesla because there are a ton of people who can't afford to drive one and there's no reason to rub it into their face. This is so ingrained in Tesla culture that there are lists on Tesla forums with a bunch of snarky pun with a bunch of snarky puns you can choose from to put on your vanity plate. I don't have a problem with Teslas. I like Teslas. I think they're good, but come on. Who decided that tech guys have to think that they're funny? You're not funny, you're rich. This one actually I do like, it says panel gaps, and that's like owning a flaw of your car. That is self-deprecating and that is funny. Car lashes. Okay, okay, okay guys, I got an idea, hear me out. Eyelashes for your headlights. I'll admit, I think they are very pretty cute. Uh, there's really no reason for it other than uh, it's fun, and sometimes you wanna give your car a little bit more personality. I mean, the front of cars do look like faces, and headlights are definitely the eyes. Wheels are the feet, tires are the shoes, exhaust is the anus, duh. <coughs> what you might not know is that it goes beyond eyelashes. You can get eyeliner for your headlights, which can shape them to whatever expression you want your car to have. Angry, <clears throat> alluring, all types of expressions. There's even little eyebrow decals you can put on your headlights to make your car look like that one actor with the big old eyebrows. Uh, a lot of people like to hate on these uh, and make fun of them, but don't let people tell you what you should or shouldn't do to your car unless it is an unfunny pun on your Tesla. This next car trend is a controversial one. Extreme camber. First, let's talk about camber for a second. Negative camber means the bottom of your wheel is farther out than the top, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, most cars, especially race cars, have negative camber because it helps with handling and drivability. Negative camber has also been a pretty important part of stance culture because it lets you fit wide wheels under your low car. And you know I like big wheels on little cars. But just like pretty much everything else on this list, some people like to take their camber to the extreme, sometimes to the point where the car is barely even drivable. There's a whole subculture in Japan called Oni camber, which literally means demon, demon camber. It's been described as an offshoot of Basuzoku, which is all about vehicular absurdity and throwing function to the freaking curb along with your front splitter. Now, I'm not gonna lie. This is a very silly thing to do to a car. Extreme camber will destroy your tires way faster, and if you're not the best at parallel parking, you're probably gonna bend your wheels. But, I mean, it's not like they have veiny human testicles dangling off of their bumpers, so it could be worse. Now, this is the reason that we made this video. 
All right, this is the best. We didn't even know that these existed until a couple of weeks ago when we saw them at a car show. Car show dolls. If you've ever been to a classic car show, you may have noticed that some of the cars have like these little dolls in overalls with their arms crossed in front of their eyes crying against the grill of a car. Hey, you know what my car needs? A child crying on it. So, what the f is the deal with these things? Turns out they have a bunch of different names like crybaby dolls or punished dolls. But the most common and only slightly less creepy name is timeout dolls. And these creepsters were super popular in the crafting and quilting community before making their move to car shows. No one really knows why they became so popular, but some people think it was a way for the whole family to get involved in the car scene. While Papa Bear was busy waxing the old Bel Air, Mama Bear was sewing together a matching doll for the car show display. But timeout dolls are just the beginning of this weird trend. There's another style of doll that's super popular in the lowrider scene. These things aren't just in overalls, they're dressed like the owners, like a miniature version of them, which makes them cool, I guess, and not as creepy. Let me know in the comments if you know someone that I can commission a crybaby doll version of me. I'd love one. You ever think, dang, I wanna do some cool stuff but I don't have the right hat? <laughs> Boom, problem solved. Introducing the first official Kentucky Cobra hat. Perfect for doing anything in. Perfect for doing stuff like this. Perfect for climbing ladders. Perfect for shredding. Perfect for chilling on the couch with your boo. She's in the bathroom. I've been waiting so long for these to come out. We've been working on them for a while and I'm really, really, really stoked on how they turned out. High quality embroidery on the front. That's the new official Kentucky Cobra logo. Donut hit in the back, also embroidered. Mesh back, I love the fit. It's my new favorite hat. I can't wait to see you guys wearing them. Post pictures on Instagram, tag me in them. I will repost. That's how you're gonna look when you buy one. Now there's millions more car trends uh, that we didn't cover on this one. Let me know down in the comments which ones we missed. Well, maybe we'll do a second version of this video. If you wanna learn about manufacturer car trends, check out this episode of Wheelhouse. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Love you.